While the environmental sustainability problem has existed for a long time, it was definitively discovered and published in 1972 by the Limits to Growth Project and Book. Here is the cover of the third edition of that book, published in 2004. Right there on the cover are the two curves that if we don't do something about them soon are going to cause environmental collapse. This curve is the carrying capacity of the biosphere. And this curve is the population. However much most of civilization may pretend that these two curves are not related, they are. This is the limits. As population grows beyond the limits, that is the carrying capacity, guess what happens? The carrying capacity starts to fall. The biosphere can no longer carry as many people as it used to due to pollution, natural resource depletion, climate change, etc. But due to delays in the system, the population continues to grow for a while. But sooner or later, it's time to pay the piper, and the curve starts to fall, and fall, and fall. This is the classic curve of collapse. Now let's take a quick peek at a similar curve. First, Let's shift the limits to growth cover over to the right. Now let's reveal the other curve. This is the collapse curve for Easter Island. This was a small island, 166 square kilometers. The Polynesians colonized it way back around 400 AD. It was paradise at first. Population grew slowly for a while, and then started to pick up a bit. Unfortunately, as population increased, the inhabitants started to deforest the island by building statues which required lots of timbers, by building simple shelters, and by building canoes to go out and catch their main source of protein, which was dolphin. Population continued to rise and around 1600 guess what happened. The island had been deforested and once again time to pay the piper. The population started to collapse due to loss of food sources. Once it started to fall there was no stopping it because by then the system was so weakened it was totally unable to cope with the problem. This raises a relevant question. Will today's civilization do any better? Now let's return to the limits to growth curve. The limits to growth project discovered that this collapse curve is going to come about unless civilization changes course drastically. But this has not exactly happened. That's where the dueling loops model comes in mighty handy. The limits to growth model identified the sustainability problem. The dueling loops model takes the next step and diagnoses why civilization has been unable to change course in time. The dueling loops model will allow us to understand a beautiful thing. First, let's extend the carrying capacity curve to what it would be if it had never collapsed. Now then, see this population curve? It goes up, 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 up. What we would like to see that curve do instead is this sort of thing. That would be good system behavior. Because there's no carrying capacity overshoot, 
there's no collapse. But why can't we get the system to do this? Collapse is now just around the corner. What's really happening is just what the limits to growth model predicted. Population gets into overshoot, and sooner or later, it's time to pay the piper. And we have collapse. The curve goes down, 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 and down. Why is this? Why is there such strong systemic change resistance to living sustainably, even though we've been trying to turn the system around for over 30 years now? That is the question the dueling loops model will attempt to answer.